she wore a shot from Benoit Schwartz and her allow. They looked at calling the draw just for a minute, and then uh, it's supposed to play across the top and make the double. Wow, what a great job that was. Have a look at that again. What a great shot, what a great call. That was risky. Great big one is. See why there's three null and see why they're in the top right now. Moving up the rankings. On cheap D, it's Botcher and Ramsfeld. Botcher's two and one. Ramsfeld one and two, and they're into an extra end after Ramsfeld scored one in the eighth. Hammer belongs to Botcher. Folks over the other side, though. Yeah. Yeah. Come off the zone now, that's the question. Or they nice and big time. And and it's not yet so offside now, so it's hard to miss now. Now you'll make this eighty percent, you could say. Last rock for Denmark Schwartz, Van Burke. Sweet spice jerk sauce. It rips. Stripes are the right notes. What the hell is going on? What it is? Yes, I am. We need jerk spice chicken rice for only a second. When you conquered another game, <laughs> a long day, a job well done, and a final work call, where's your place? Tell us you are. And fit in comfortably.
and there's still a lot more to go. The week's only half over, so uh, and the weekend's just begun, so I'm seeing a lot more glasses of wine and beer out there now that Friday's finally hit. <laughs> but anyways, a couple of things I want to say. First off, just a reminder, we have a new bar just over to the side there. Uh, it has cans, so you don't have to walk all the way to the back if you don't want to wait for a server. We still do have the silent auction uh, is still going on. We have a lot of great stuff, so you want to go check that out. As well as we're going to have a hot hot stove uh, here soon with Dean Dunstone. But before that and after that, we have a local artist here, Ashley Law. She's going to be performing for everybody here this evening. Uh, she has music on Spotify, streaming services. You can check her out at Ashley Law Music. And yes, everybody would give a big round of applause for Ashley Law, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, this first song, um, this is my first debut single that I released back in May. It's called Not the Woods. So this next song is one of the most recent songs that I've written. It's called Mentor.
Testing. Check. Whoa. What a loud. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> Wake up, everybody. Okay. Are we ready to go? I'm taller than you thought. Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for, uh, for being here. Uh, my name is Mark Peterson, and I get to be the uh, guy to ask these guys questions and uh, guide us for the next half an hour. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I work uh, with Makwa 7, and they're the ones that are sort of sponsoring to put this on. Go to their website, Makwa 7. You can come and talk to me after this. Uh, it's all about the data. So we sat there and thought we would come up with a bunch of questions and farm the data from various sources. So we went out uh, in the world and asked for questions that people might want to ask the, the Matt Dunstone team. And what we ended up with were lots of questions. Yeah, for a start, 49 questions. Go as far as south as Brazil, as far north as Iceland, and from pretty much every province and one of the territories in Canada. So it's uh, pretty impressive. Even New Zealand. We have questions from all over the place. Some of them are entertaining. You guys are going to find out. Uh, so beside me here, I uh, probably doesn't give much of a We have uh, Matt Dun Dunstone, originally from Winnipeg. Uh, he's been to five briars. Uh, BJ Newfeld, also Winnipeg, eight briars. Colton hey! Watt. Selkirk, Manitoba, been to two riders. Ryan Harden from Sault Ste. Marie, 14 riders. I've been to a few riders too, but I was just in the stands watching, eating popcorn. The, uh, but yeah, so lots of questions we had. We used some uh, advanced analytics to sort through them and ended up uh, giving me a nice little tablet here with some questions. And I'm going to jump into it, unless you have any uh, opening comments you guys wanted. Oh, fire away. Fire away, already. Uh, I will apologize in advance. We probably won't get to all 49 questions, because that would be crazy. Uh, so the first one that I've got on this list here, which is three seconds. Anyways, just a minute. It says, this is for the whole team, what is your favorite curling shot? I'll start with that. It's pretty easy for me. Um, 2019 Briar for me, uh, Kev's last shot. Um, it was like a board weight double uh, in Brandon, which was uh, in my home province, so it was a little bit extra special. Um, swept it the whole way. I gave up on, on it on the hog line. I thought we were curling too much, and I was just trying to, I called the guys off. I was hoping it would stick around for a shot rather than go to the extra. Um, and then I ended up just touching uh, Boxer's Rock just enough. And we won, so that's uh, my favorite curling shot, easily. Yeah. Is, it, is it like a curling shot you like to throw? Either or, or dealer's okay. choice, man. Your favorite moment or your favorite of? Great, right, I got, I got two. I got my favorite moment was when uh, I was third for Matt in our juniors in 2013, and the winning shot that Maddie threw. Both of us hollering all the way down the ice, and it it's um it came off one and it squeezed all the way through, and we managed to set one in the end. And that was just super exciting. And then my favorite shot is playing a nice little hack waiter off the line. Okay. I would have to say uh, I think it was the trials in 2013 against Kevin Martin. Um, you know Brad Jacobs made. I think it was a run double to get to and put us into the finals, and we kind of sent them to the semifinals. So um, I think that gave us a ton of momentum going into that trials final, and obviously, you know, ultimately we won that and went to the Olympics. So I think that's kind of my most memorable shot from our team. And as like my own personal shot, I don't really throw very difficult. 
not so I guess I guess any tip maybe in the last the last time I've that opportunity was there, which isn't very often anymore, but you know those tips can can be made. Gold couldn't uh, spoil my shot. I always have the price you pay for going last, so uh, you kind of put me on the spot here, but I'm going to pick a shot that uh, is applicable to this team. Um, last year at the Briar, uh, we played Botcher um, in, a, in a very tight game to, to, get, to get to the 1 2 game. Um, it was an intern hit to report. Um, just snuck through it, got, got the two to win the game, and a uh, pretty exciting moment uh, for, for this team to, to share together in our first year. Thank you. By the way, that question came from uh, Barbara in front of the uh, The next one is from St. John's Maple Run from Lucas. Uh, he's uh, 12 years old. It says, how old were you, and this, this one is specifically the Matt, how old were you when you competed in your first national tournament? Uh, my first national bond spiel, I would have been 17 years old uh, in 2013. Uh, the same one that Colton had mentioned up in uh, Fort McMurray, uh, first Canadian juniors. Cool. Okay, the next question is an interesting one. And this is the one from uh, Brazil, and it's for Team Dunstone, from Juliana in San Paulo. And this one says, which other sport do you consider yourself really good at? Uh, it's, it's hard for me to pick because I'm just so good at all of them. Uh, I got the control now that I get to go first for this question. Um, baseball was the only other sport that I played competitively outside of curling, so I'll have to go with baseball. Uh, for my side, Matt likes to think he's really good at a lot of sports. He's average at a lot of them. Um, for me, it would be golf. Um, golfed a lot as a kid and ended up uh, going the route of being a golf professional um, as a career. Uh, I just recently got out of that and switched to the real estate so that I could uh, curl more. Um, but yeah, I love to golf in the summer. Um, we have some pretty, we've had some pretty intense matches, the four of us on the course. Um, so that would definitely be the sport that uh, I think I'm my second best sport and one that I really enjoy. Yeah, for me, uh, it would be golf. When I was younger, I did more competitive golf, but kind of trailed away from it once I started curling. And then I just didn't really want to do anything super competitive in the summertime. So, yeah, golf for me. Yeah, same as these guys, these guys, I played a lot of golf growing up, um, kind of got back into it lately, um, but also growing up, played a lot of hockey, a lot of traveling hockey. Uh, EJ and I kind of had to choose, you know, which route we wanted to go, curling or hockey, because we were both competitive in, in both sports. So uh, I think we made the right choice. So I guess hockey would have been, you know, second choice growing up. Cool. Thank you. Uh, okay, the next question is actually for uh, Beach. Uh, it comes from Calgary, Ariana. When and where did you throw the most important rock in your career thus far? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, yeah, Matt said the next shot's always the most important shot. Um, I don't know, hard to pinpoint a shot exactly. Um, I'll say maybe 2019 Worlds, we're playing the, the States. Um, we kind of had to, we kind of had to run the table to put ourselves in a good spot to make the playoffs. I made a really thin tick on one of Schuster's shots and, and kind of turned the momentum of the game and and then Kev made a couple of really, really good ones late in the game to, to win that. And then we kind of rolled that momentum um, through to the final. So that's kind of the first one that comes to mind. Very cool. The next question is for Team Dunstone again. So for all of you, and this one comes from uh, Pritis, from a guy named John. You might know him. And this one is, who is the best dancer on the team? 
And if you prove it, you're going to get a lot of beer on Sunday. It's definitely not me. You got to prove it. I, I don't have to prove it. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a fact that I cannot get. <laughs> And we haven't uh, we haven't really had a chance to uh, test that out. Yeah. Great night. <laughs> we could go to the next question if you want. <laughs> uh, they, we've established that they're all terrible dancers. I haven't had near enough to drink to start. Yeah. Dancing. So on Sunday after all the beer, then we'll find out. The next question comes from Dryden, from Pamela. It's for Team Dunstone. This is another interesting one. Along the similar lane, vein, actually, it says, can you put your pants on hands-free like the Norwegian team? Or have you ever tried to? Next question. <laughs> the next question comes from Laura in Calgary. Oh, it's for uh, Ryan. Do you feel like you are experiencing growth as a player now that you're playing with a different group of players, different styles? than your brother and cousin? And if so, what have you noticed the most in the last year and a half? Good question. Um, yeah, obviously being with, you know, EJ and Brad for, you know, 14 years, uh, majority of our careers together. Um, yeah, it was definitely a, a change. Um, you know, I think it was a good change for all of us. It's something new, something fresh. Uh, I know for me personally, I think, you know, having a little bit of a bigger role uh, on this team than I did in, in my past teams is, you know, definitely, you know, made me you know, a little bit of a, a better player this year, I would, I would think. Um, so, yeah, just having that little bit of a, bit of a bigger role, you know, bringing the experience to, you know, Beach has a ton of experience, but, you know, Colton Matt being young, 27, 10 years younger than, than EJ and I. Um, you know, I think that experience that we can bring has definitely, you know, made myself a better player. And I think it's, you know, been the, <clears throat> helped, you know, have success for this team. Oh, okay. The next question actually comes from a person in Calgary. His name is Rye. He's in the under 12 year old age group. So, it says, how many curling brooms do you bring to a Grand Slam competition? Do you have backups like hockey players do? Yeah, uh, we definitely have backups. Um, Matt can get pretty angry sometimes, <laughs> which uh, leaves our brooms very vulnerable. Um, so yeah, we bring about seven or eight brooms, I guess, with us. Um, and then we have... Me and Matt have our, our uh, corn brooms that we throw with, so we have about 10, 10 brooms in the bag. But uh, yeah, you got to be prepared for anything that happens out here. Cool. Okay, the next one is for Colton. How old were you when you started curling? When I started curling, I was seven years old. So I've been doing it for 21 years. Yeah. Nice. The next one uh, question is from Vancouver, a guy named Duncan. It's for the team. What is your favorite or coolest spot you've ever curled in? Coolest spot. Um, yeah, there you go. Yeah. I like Red Deer, actually. We've uh, The only time I ever curled here was last year, um, and we won that event. And we're getting some good vibes this week. So yeah, Red Deer's been very good to us. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, for myself, probably the, the coolest spot is uh, I've got, been lucky enough to uh, play in Scotland four times. Um, they have a World Curling Tour event there in Perth. Um, so when I played with uh, Mike McEwen, we went over there four times in a row, got to do a bunch of golfing and all the, the cool courses over there. Um, great people. Um, you know, they love their curling kind of just as much as, as we do here. So that's probably my, uh, that, that's definitely my favorite place that I've uh, curled in my career. Uh, for me, it'll be in uh, Sochi, Russia. Um, back in 2013, when we won the Canadian Juniors, the World Juniors, uh, 
was in Sochi. It was the year before the Olympics, obviously. So uh, they, they ran a trial run. So we got to play our World Juniors, um, where, where Ryan got to play his Olympics. Uh, not the age him at all, but we were still in juniors then. And uh, yeah, I mean, just to, just to be around, you know, they were still building all the Olympic buildings at the time, but just to see the lay of the land, get to play in the same building that Ryan was able to win an Olympic gold in. Um, super cool uh, experience for, for us young ones. Yeah, Maddie just snagged that one for me too. Um, so I'm not going to say Sochi. It was, it was unbelievable. But uh, for um, mixed doubles, my wife and I, we went to the World Cup finale and it was in Beijing. And that was really cool to see too. Curl yeah, I was going to say Sochi, Sochi as well, but I guess um, we went to, uh, before the Olympics, we went over to uh, Switzerland for a week just to kind of get away and, you know, hang out and, you know, uh, just practice and relax. We went to a little city called Chambry in, in Switzerland, it was up in the Swiss Alps. Um, really neat place, very beautiful. We just practiced, you know, drank wine and, and hung out until we had to go over to Russia. So I think that was a neat place. You could see over to France. It was uh, very beautiful and, you know, we had a blast there. Nice. Yeah, this is a cool question from Saskatoon. It uh, came from somebody named Stacy. One of those names, I'm not sure if it's a guy or a girl. Anyways, it says, uh, <laughs> How and when did you start the Manitoba Tuck? Is that something they teach in Manitoba's Learn to Curl program? Yeah, so my dad was a, a competitive curler. Um, Chris Newfeld played with Vic Peters for, for a really long time. And uh, so watching my dad curl and Vic curl, I, I wanted to model my slide after them. Um, so that's, that's how it started with me. And there was lots of kids that, that were tucking at the time. Uh, they were... I know they did curl Manitoba. I went to one of their clinics and they tried to get me to switch and, and I flat foot and I refused. And, um, and now they actually, they do teach it a little bit now. So, uh, nothing wrong with slide and tuck. Um, I think it works for, for the three of us pretty well. Um, so yeah. Don Duguid got me off of that time. I wish he hadn't. Anyways, uh, this question comes from North Vancouver from uh, Christine. What athlete did you look up to growing up? If it wasn't a curler, how did it apply to curling? Yeah, I, kind of like from a curling standpoint, it was definitely Jeff Stoughton. Um, you know, obviously growing up in Manitoba, he was he was the king of the province. Um, for many, many years, so grew up admiring him. Um, outside of curling, um, probably Tom Brady, uh, favorite quarterback growing up, um, most decorated uh, athlete in the sport, and, and that would have been the one that, that I followed closely uh, growing up. Not, not sure if it applied to curling at all. Um, I knew early on I was never going to be an NFL quarterback, but that would have been the guy. Yeah, for me, uh, probably I was a huge golf fan. So uh, growing up, I got to see Tiger Woods in his in his heyday. Uh, even got a chance to see him live at uh, the Presidents Cup in two thousand seven in Montreal. Um, hard not to admire his tenacity and his will to win, and you know he strives for for greatness. Um, so for me, Tiger Woods, love watching him play golf. Uh, no, nobody moves the needle like he does in uh, in sport. Jeff Stoughton as curling, and uh, and then for actually for golf, it was Tiger Woods. Uh, he was he was the other guy that I looked up to when I was young that wasn't a curler. Yeah, I would say for myself in, in curling, I looked up to, you know, our father a lot. You know, he got us into the sport when we were four or five years old and out there every every weekend with our hockey helmets on. So 
you know, he, he played in a few, I think four briars and actually my first briar I ever played in, I was actually curling with my dad and my brother and Brad. So um, outside curling, same with these guys, Tiger Woods, love his intensity, his emotion, his passion. And uh, ultimately I tried bringing that into my, into my curling game. The next question is for Matt. It says, uh, what was the most difficult time in your journey to curling supremacy, it says. That's, uh, that's, that's some very high praise. Um, I, I would say the most difficult time was just uh, coming out of juniors, getting into men's. Um, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a busy time in one's life and you're trying to figure out what you, what you want to do with your life. And, you know, just kind of, it, it was decision time whether or not I wanted to give this curling thing a full go or... If I wanted to go a different route, um, you know, to, to find a find a career and, and stability in life, and um, you know, obviously chose chose the curling route, um, but kind of that 19 to, to 21 years of age, um, just figuring out sort of sort of what I wanted to do, and, and picked curling and, and ran with it, and I'm very happy I did. Cool. Uh, the next question is. Uh, from Calgary, from Walla, it says, who is for the team, who in your opinion is the greatest curler of all time, other than the four of you, of course? Oh, you could uh, you could go a couple different routes with this. I mean, there, there's so many different types of resumes out there. I mean, what Brad Gooch has done over the last uh, six, seven years, um, very impressive. Um, Kevin Martin's resume speaks for itself. Nicholas Sedin, uh, four or five world titles now. Um, so I, I, I would personally, if, if I was, if there was a gun to my head, I'd say Kevin Martin. Yeah, I mean, Matt pretty much listed off, you know, the guys that you'd have to probably choose from. Um, in my opinion, it would probably be Kevin Martin. Uh, I don't know if anyone's really dominated the game like 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 his team did in 2009 2010 um you know they were far and away better than than everybody else so that would be my pick yeah my my pick would be the same kevin martin for sure i, I guess i'll go brad gushu uh, yeah, just what he's done over the last, you know, five, six years, especially, you know, with how how good our sport is now, you know, the, the level of curling is, is unbelievable. So, um, you know, to be able to win that many briars and that many slams, um, at, uh, I'd go with Brad. Cool. Okay, so we're going to be wrapping this up uh, with the final question. It's a two-part question because I have, I can cheat and I can ask two questions at once. So I ex get one extra one in there. Uh, so there's a couple of questions from uh, Calgary, from Tannis and Leanne. So it says, two part questions. Do you have any thoughts on how curling can expand and encourage for younger people? And what advice would you give a young curler who wants to get into this competitive curling? Yeah, I'll maybe tackle the second part of that question. Um, you know, I think it's important as a, as a young curler that you, you know, find three three friends that you can, that you can start the, up the game with. Um, you know, it's, it's a, it's a great sport. Uh, you can learn a lot. Um, and it's just, it's a lot of fun when you're doing it with chances are you're gonna, you're gonna enjoy the game a lot more. Um, you know, you kind of see things the same way, um, common interests. It's, uh, it's great if you can do it with friends. So, you know, if you're a young curler out there, it's, it's, uh, you get free buddies, you know, that you that you like to spend time with and go to the ring and practice and, and play in events and have a lot of fun and, and then, you know, see where it goes from there. The first part was, uh, what thoughts do you have to, or the second part was how to try to get them into competitive. The first part was how to just expand or get more young people curling. Yeah, I, I think, um, you know, it's, this could be up, up for debate. This would be my personal opinion on, you know, how to sort of expand, get more people involved. 
um, young people with, within the sport, um, you know, a, a bowling alley type idea, um, you know, for curling rinks where people can just drop in, um, pay a small fee, come out, play with friends, um, you know, make it more of a social setting as, as opposed to the, to the sport itself. Ultimately, if you're having fun doing something, you're going to be more attracted to it. You're going to want to come back and, and do more of it. And, and, you know, I mean, look at what we have here tonight. I mean, this is what it's all about. Everybody here having a great time and, and, and I mean, the more more of that we can create within the clubs, um, I, I mean, I kind of relate it to, to golf a little bit. I mean, if, if you golf once or twice a year, you're not you're not going to go out and buy a membership. And, and right now with, with curling, I mean, you, you either got to pay for some rental ice and, and don't really get to play any games or, or you got to buy a membership. So if you're not really sold on, you know, playing the sport, I mean, if you only golf once or twice a year, you're not going to go buy a golf membership. So, uh, I mean, I, I like the idea of having, you know, some sort of drop-in leagues, uh, a lot like a bowling alley, come on out, um, you know, have a good time, and, and hopefully you like the sport and the atmosphere, and, and ultimately that's what attracts you and brings you back for more. Cool. Okay, so uh, that's going to be it for the questions. I do have a little bit of uh, stuff I have to take care of here as your moderator. Uh, first of all, don't forget there's a silent auction right around the corner over there. For the people watching on the live stream, too bad, you don't get to go. But uh, if anybody wants to go around, there's a bunch of really cool stuff. Uh, I would also like to say a few thank yous. I'd like to thank Christy with Grand Slam, Wilson AV, Thank you very much for running the mics. Uh, Jerry from APRE, or from uh, the Curling Zone, been helping us. I'd like to thank the APRE Curling people for giving us this amazing venue. Uh, I'd like to thank the Makwa 7 group of people who are in manning these mics and live streaming and just taking care of getting stuff for Matt and the guys. Uh, I'd like to thank sincerely the question suppliers, the people that sent us in these questions. There's a bunch of really cool questions. Uh, I would also like to uh, thank all the Red Deer volunteers and workers that have been putting on this whole weekend. I would love to thank Team Dunstone for coming up here and putting on this show for you. And I would love to thank Ashley Law for the music leading into it and for a bit of music after it. She's uh, awesome. Go to Ashley Law Music and uh, play some of her songs. Uh, am I forgetting anything, guys? I'm um, just typical skip move. you got to get the last word in. Um, just on behalf of Team Dunstone, I want to thank John, Jeremy, Mark, Resta Makwa 7, um, you know, for having us, uh, putting this on tonight. Um, what you guys do for us, uh, it, goes, it goes so far in, in allowing us to compete and, and compete at the highest level. Um, so just want to thank you guys for that and your support over the season. Uh, it's been a great partnership with you guys. And, and lastly, I want to thank Red Deer for putting on a great show. Um, we've... We've, uh, we, we've talked amongst ourselves. This has been our favorite slam of the season up to this point. Uh, the, arena, the arena, the venue... Um, you guys, you fans coming out, cheering us on. It's been a packed house for, for most of the week, so we re really appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you. I don't think I've forgotten anything. Thank you very much, and uh, I don't think I have to say this, but let's have a good party. Thank you.